The ancient Greek philosopher um, and, more importantly, mathematician Archimedes famously said, give me a place to stand and I will move the world. One could say, give me a place to stand and I will move everything. Um, and uh, it, he was, of course, talking about levers, but I believe that uh, that, that point of view can be applied to anything, that, um, that uh, principle. Give me some sort of basic facts to work with, and I can make sense out of the entire universe, ultimately, simply by the power of my own reason, my own deduction, or it is possible, at least, to get some basic information that I have to just sort of take as a given, and I can go from there, and I can go to all kinds of uh, interesting places with my intellect. Um, now, of course, what that is, it's, it's an axiom. It's, um, and the axiom is the basic building blocks of any epistemology, of any, um, any philosophy, anything. Uh, it's based upon uh, the point at which you can stand and move the universe. Um, but an axiom, we've got to be careful, is not a fact. An axiom is not an absolute. An axiom is simply a, an assumption upon which we have to ultimately base everything. It's conveniently or axiomatically true, but it's not absolutely true. For example, we use the decimal system every day. Uh, our entire civilization is based on the decimal system. The decimal system is not absolute, it's not infallible, but we have to assume that it is. And assuming that it is infallible, it can get us some pretty interesting things. But at the end of the day, the decimal system is simply based on this. We've got uh, ten fingers, and that's enough. And we've, based, <laughs> we've uh, sent uh, people to the moon or uh, beyond uh, based on that, on the decimal system. It is an axiom, but it's not an actual fact or a truth. We can do things with it, but we haven't arrived at any actual incontrovertible facts. And the conflation of uh, axioms with uh, facts is what leads to error, uh, or at least to, um, uh, I would say, unprovable or unsustainable conclusions. In the context of this discussion, Mr. Benatar says that let's... Use, let's go axiomatic and, uh, in our assumption that consciousness is a function of sentience and sentience is a function of the physical universe. That's an axiom because we don't know that yet. Maybe we'll never know. We, are, we don't know what consciousness is. We're, we haven't got a clue what consciousness is and we don't know its relationship to the physical universe. But Again, it's been so useful to us for so long that we've gotten kind of lazy and we've gotten into the habit of assuming this. And also, so many people have so many crazy stories to explain consciousness, i.e. God created it or whatever, um, that you know, whatever they say, the opposite is probably true because their point of view is based on complete unreason. Our point of view is based on reason. But an axiom is still not 100% factual. It's still not the truth. It's just an assumption. It's the point at which you can stand and use your lever to move the world. Um, in that vein, my favorite fellow Socrates comes up again. There was a, a fellow by the name of Chirophon who went up to the ancient Delphic Oracle. I've already mentioned the Oracle in another, uh, another video in the Gnothi Se Alton, Know Thyself one. And he went up there and he asked the Oracle who is the wisest man in the world. And the Oracle, of course, said, Socrates is the wisest man. Word of this gets back to Socrates in Athens, and, and Socrates is dumbfounded. He says, wait a minute, how can I possibly be the wisest man in the world? I don't know anything. I know absolutely nothing. And based upon uh, on Socrates' writings, or, or at least what other people have written about him, it's hard to say what he actually believed. He never actually said anything. He never actually propounded any beliefs. He simply examined beliefs, belief itself. And so he thought about it, and he thought about it, and he went, wait a minute. Perhaps I alone among men know that I know nothing. So maybe that's what makes me wise. I know that I'm thoroughly ignorant, whereas other people think that they're wise, but they don't really know everything. They don't know anything, as a matter of fact. Socrates admitted that he knew nothing. What that tells me is Socrates knew that axioms are, uh, logically speaking and rationally speaking, a potential blind alley and a potential dead end. Because if you start to use them in terms of, um, uh, or rather as uh, absolutes, you end up uh, making unsustainable conclusions. Um, mathematics is not an absolute. 
um, and thinking that it is uh, gets you into all sorts of troubles because there's when you deal with the concept of infinity you can't have a finite piece of infinity and that's what numbers are attempting to do um, but you can still within the boundaries that you've set for yourself you can you can still uh, work with those axioms but you've got to be careful of the fact that you're doing just that you're basing your point of view on an axiom and nothing more beware of conflating the two beware of that illusion beware of the idea that there are absolutes out there or at least that we've discovered any absolutes out there it leads as I say to unsustainable conclusions and it leads to blind alleys uh, like antinatalism it seems logically impeccable until you actually examine the axioms that underpin it uh, it's no more sensical than anything else it's all based on certain of a, a certain assumptions um, I, without which I admit we can't go forward but it's mistaking the axioms as facts as the truth given the fact of what conclusions Mr. Benatar has arrived at by the um, the lazy conflation of axiom for fact I think it's fair to say that um, he's um, he's not as wise as Socrates thank you